Good morning, everybody, and welcome to October's second Sunday. I am Jessica Alstrom, and every second Sunday of the month for the last few years, I have jumped online and given you guys a quantum energy update. And this month, October, we have really come full circle. So I have a lot of information to share with you. Good morning to everybody that's jumping on. Um, we can go ahead and share in our other groups if we want team. That's great. Awesome. This topic today, first and foremost, you know, welcome to your, your hunter's full moon today. We are perfect timing doing this broadcast today, right on the day of the full moon. The hunter's full moon in Aries, and if any of you guys know the Aries energy out there, there's a lot of fire. Fire is great because it burns things to the ground. Lots of things are ending right now. Lots of cycles are ending. Lots of stories are ending. Lots of old personalities are ending. Lots of old behavior is ending. Lots of old um, choices that you guys have been making for a really long time, that we've been making for a really long time, are just not part of who we are anymore. So that is something that this kind of full moon is bringing us full circle to, is this powerful, fiery, almost with a little bit of aggression endings. September was a little emotional, and, and October is really kind of like feisty energy, but it's also the season of the Libra, which means that it's all about finding your footing and finding your balance and going, it's not really about anger or revenge or getting back at someone. It's really about just being done. If you've ever kind of gotten to that place in your life where you're just really done, you get this knowing within you, and it's not bad, it's not good, you're not mad, you're not sad, you're not unhappy. There's no need to even forgive. It's more of like lessons learned, important downloads understood, action being taken, and we are moving forward and we're moving into the year of vision in 2020. So we're really kind of at this point cleaning up, dusting off our boots and getting ready for that huge expression of what's coming. Now, if you guys have been following the ascension process, which I know you are, body, mind and soul, you can't help it. We're in this fast, fast forward of evolution now. And whether you are a seasoned spiritual teacher, a practitioner of the healing arts, or just getting into yoga or hearing me for the very first time, you know, where you are in your life is what you're noticing is very, very fast levels of awareness coming in. You're learning a lot about yourself and who you are and what you really want. And sometimes in order to know what you want, you gotta know what you don't want. And that really brings us to this Libra energy right now and the topic that I really want to dive in today. And this Libra energy is about a fully healed, integrated, wise, ascended being is one who has mastered both sides of the paradox, both sides of duality, both sides of dark and light, both sides of yin and yang, and has come into the balance point or the zero point energy field. And that is really where all of us are gearing towards, which is why if you've noticed in your life, sometimes you have to go to extremes to learn about yourself. You have to go all the way into the dark and then you have to go all the way back into the light. You know, you have to go to the, the center phase and that saint phase until you kind of really find that balance point of like, you know what, I'm a little bit of both. And one of my clients, um, Christine, put it perfectly. She said, I think I'm going to call myself a shadow dancer. And I really love that because for a long time we've been calling ourselves shadow hunters and we've been hunting out the dark sides of ourselves and battling with our demons. And really, you know, our demons have a lot to teach us if we were to just sit on that edge with both the light and the dark sides of ourselves and have a deep conversation about what sides we actually are playing with, not against. And that's really where we are as an evolutionary process is we've had to face ourselves in the mirror. We've had to look at our family dynamics. We've had to clean up our bloodlines. We've had to heal our ancestors. We have had to pull our toolbox out of our heart chakras and begin to step into that and use our toolbox of our intuitive gifts to help rebuild a planet of unity and love, which we are in a fast paced direction towards accomplishing. Trust me, I've seen the end, it's amazing. So understanding a little bit about this topic, you know, I was just kind of glancing at YouTube earlier to see if anybody else was talking about this and I didn't see anything else. So I thought, you know what, what a great topic to kind of talk about. We've talked so much about the divine feminine in the last, you know, 15, 20 years, it's all been about this 
uprising of this divine feminine energy. And if you look at the 100 years, it's actually not 20 years, it's about 100 years. And the divine feminine has really been kind of taking her position as a powerful creator into this world again. And, and when I say again is because as I come full story, so circle with this story, you'll understand, although you probably already do. The understanding of this divine feminine rising has all been about her moving into balance of her divine masculine. That's all it's ever been. This divine feminine rising and the future is female is more of a metaphor. It is about the divine feminine who is in her true essence as a species, a fourth dimensional creator. And the fourth dimensional creator is the gateway. It is the womb of creation itself. It is the, the, the entry and the exit point of creation in physical form through a non-physical spectrum. It is the, the house of creation. It is the nurturing space. It is the vision. It is the imagination. It is that, um, dark supple space of innocence and what that means is in no sense it means when you kind of move into enlightenment you realize that your life doesn't make sense in a analytical logical perspective but somehow it works it flows and that is when you start really using that divine feminine energy to create now the divine feminine had to rise and find her balance point so what did she have to rise to she had to rise into her divine masculine she had to take action. She had to take that vision and that nesting and that those ideas and those building blocks and that energy. And she had to turn it into form, which means she had to mix with her in her own being and her own sacral chakra energy, the form of creation. And through birthing expression, she joined with her divine masculine and began to rise. And you've been seeing this everywhere on the planet. I mean, the future really has been looking kind of female lately. There is divine feminine CEOs and mother of the year and scientists and doctors and lawyers and all kinds of powerhouse women leading this spiritual ascension. It is divinely feminine as far as the leadership in our spiritual ascension process. Now, I'm not saying anything against the divine masculine because the divine masculine is waiting in perfect order to rise after the completion process has moved into a balance point with the divine feminine. Now, the divine feminine is the one who actually brings that vision into that that space where creation can then manifest. And it's just like the orgasm effect that takes a male and a female to create life. Right. So if a woman was going to step into her power, she would have to access her divine masculine. Now, I could say that I'm a perfect example of that. You know, I've got the story of, you know, the, the you know, really sad childhood and trying to find my own voice coming from a very highly codependent past of victim perpetrator in energy, hurting myself, hurting others you know, being addicted to things, being suffocated by my own mind, being tortured by my own ego, and then my rise and my awakening and my rebirth, all in the pursuit of survival. And, you know, wanting to be a good mother for my three children at the time and wanting to be able to support them and wanting to be able to move away from codependency. And the only way that I really knew how to do that was to step into my divine masculine. And to step into my divine masculine meant that I was no longer asking for help. I was no longer asking for answers. I was no longer asking for um, guidance. Everything had to come from within me. And then I had to take action on what actually came through. And that was the scary part. And that's where most of you guys have gotten stuck over your lifetime is listening to that intuition come up and through the divine feminine and then to step into the action phase of your divine masculine and do something with it. It's terrifying. It's terrifying because as a collective, the divine masculine has been basically suppressed with the idea that it is the true leadership and it is the true hierarchy of the planet. It is the man's world. It is a man's business world. It's a, you know, the, the man is the head of the ha house. But what we realize is that the man may be the head of the house, but the woman has always been the neck. And the woman, the divine feminine within, has always been the submissive creator. And as that position changes and rises and the divine feminine rises into her masculine, she's doing so in a strong, 
yet very vulnerable place. And this is so important for our evolution, you guys, because strength and vulnerability is the true essence of, of who we are as beings. You know, being the entire universe in a very fragile mortal body. That is the perfect understanding of both the yin and the yang in one house. And to have that first nurturing element and that empathic element and that compassionate element before one steps into their power is basically a example of what grace is, which means although I have the power, I am using it in a discerned, compassionate state of grace. Now, obviously, that's what we want for our planet. And so you can see as our evolution hap is happening that the divine feminine had to rise first. Now, I'm not saying that there's no divine masculine, you know, leaders on the planet. There's they're everywhere. But you'll notice that there's really kind of two categories. There's leaders and then there's the the divine masculine that is struggling with its own divine feminine. You'll notice that you're either major leader in your spiritual community, in your your guru on YouTube, you've got millions of followers, or you're kind of fighting against your own feelings. It's like there's really kind of this space between that is this gap, but it all is based in divine timing, which means that I'm not really talking about men and women because whether you have a female body or a male body, you might have the essence in a female body of having more divine masculine energy. You might be in a man body and have more divine feminine. So I'm not talking about necessarily this construct. I'm talking about the vision and the ideas and the feelings that one has dealing with on an emotional, spiritual, and physical level in their realities. That's what I'm talking about. So bear with me as I speak in metaphors a lot. So this understanding as this divine feminine has had to rise, right? She's had to rise. She's had to be both mother and father. She's had to be both, you know, partner and friend. She's had to remember her own power. What she's been doing the last probably 10 or 15 years in this evolutionary phase is reconnecting with other divine feminine and saying, wow, I don't need to be in comparison of you. I don't need to be worried about you stealing my man. I actually love you. Your puzzle piece and my puzzle piece, we could make a great team. And there's this major healing happening all over the planet with the divine feminine, with each other, with each other. And if we look at evolution, you guys, this is so important because think about it. Think about traditional society. Now, I'm in the United States, so if you're not in the United States, this might be a little bit different where you live. But the United States is the melting pot, you guys. The U.S., it's us. We are the micro of the macro of the planet. So whatever kind of goes on here is the reality show that is secretly going on all around the world. So what goes on here, the typical male-female relationship that the collective matrix has been experiencing over the last 150 years, 200 years plus, has been a divine separation of the divine feminine of each other, which means let's pull the women apart from each other. Let's implant for every six women, let's implant every one man. Let's start some chaos. Let's implant the idea that the divine masculine is in power and the divine feminine is the submissive. And let's see how this power play and this power struggle and this joy and this creation is literally stripped away. Because if you look at the Aboriginal cultures and the Indian cultures and the American Indian cultures and the cultures that were actually thriving on this planet, it was all divine union. And although the species of divine feminine and masculine were separated at the time, there wasn't any necessarily challenges that went on in the communities, which means the women took care of each other. They took care of the children. They took care of the land. They took care of the homes. They took care of the community. And the men, they supported each other and they made sure that the, the space was protected and all of the needs were met and all of the trading was done and all of the supplies were done. And they were confidant to their wives, their women and their children. They were examples. They had a leadership but it was more about that perfect unity of each other working in the guidance that the, that the, the evolutionary phase was created to be, and it worked. 
it really worked and the divine feminine was never in um, comparison or they were never you know they, they were never competing with each other and and it was when this this matrix kind of story the agenda that we all know if we're going into those stories today we understand that if we want to create an unsettled civilization then what we do is we separate the women from each other and we have way more women than we have men and so there's lots of competition there's lots of hierarchy there's lots of lies there's lots of misbelief and it's funny because a lot of these stories that are in your collective vibration you guys your own biochemistry because every collective belief that exists even if it's not your personal belief exists in the field of the matrix in the holographic earth so if you live here you are influenced by it power of influence which means that you can't go anywhere or anyhow and not see a sample of how this is unraveling somewhere in time maybe it's even in your own family unit maybe it's in your own relationships maybe it's been in your own children maybe you can see it kind of just through the power of influence even if you're not necessarily participating with this idea so what what this happening is the women are are reconnecting with each other this divine feminine is reconnecting with each other they're beginning to build this sacred space for each other they're beginning to have safe relationships with each other and we understand in quantum physics that it takes a safe relationship a strong foundation if we're going to heal any part of ourselves unstable ground which means you're gonna stay in fight or flight for the rest of your life therefore you're never even gonna have the opportunity to heal because you're too busy surviving so as the divine feminine reconnects with herself with her sisters with her mothers with her grandmothers with her medicine women with her clone with her sages with our witches coven what we do is we relax into our gifts we begin to appreciate each other we begin to know each other we begin to remember each other and this anger and this repression that is inside collective divine feminine begins to soften and it has taken this time in history 2019 for this cycle to begin to rapidly heal all over the planet rapidly heal now where does that leave our divine masculine well if women aren't fighting with each other right and we are in a good space and we are becoming both balanced with our masculine energies which means we can take care of ourselves and we can take care of our children and we can run a fortune 500 company or run a successful you know empathic based business we can have it all we have found each other and we are finding communion and unity within the divine feminine what's left where is our attention and our focus going to move our attention and our focus is going to move as a collective to supporting this divine masculine rise now the divine masculine you guys think about it women the divine feminine all we had to do was step forward we had to step forward because the divine feminine is at the base creation of energy so in order for us to heal completely all we had to do is step forward we step forward into the action side of energy which is manifestation or matter what do men what does the divine masculine have to do you guys regardless of how easy we think that men have had it throughout their lives and how you know they've had a one-upmanship in the collective matrix maybe that is so but that has been falling away for years that has fallen away since before the real estate crash in 2008 this has been a long time coming this has been our new children that are born androgynous that our gay community and our transgender community is rising it is rising to teach us about the idea of blended duality it is here to teach us about blending of divine masculine and feminine and it is softening the edges and it softens the edges because at the base of our belief systems love always trumps belief which means that if you have a child who is born gay or transgender and you're a manly man who doesn't agree with that concept as soon as that child's born your heart is going to soften and you're going to change that belief structure about that child because love always wins and you're going to think differently about children and yourself and these walls you've built around your identity that means that I have to be this strong willed man 
There are more single fathers in the United States right now than ever before in history. And then I mean single dads that are raising kids alone on their own. They're having to learn to braid hair on YouTube, you guys, change diapers. And you're looking at them like, yeah, they should be doing that. But you guys, like, let go of your resentment when it comes to the divine feminine, whoever you are, because the divine masculine. Because if we're going to make space for the divine masculine to rise, I know a lot of women out there are waiting for this to happen. Where's our warriors? Where's our, where's our spiritual men, right? It is our job, divine feminine to create a state of grace and safe relationships for them to rise. Because you guys, we went forward. The divine feminine got to go forward. We got the easy part of this. We stepped into our action phase of our imagination. And then this divine masculine has to step backwards, has to step backwards into the divine feminine in order to rise. So before the divine masculine can fully rise up, the divine masculine has to heal. The divine masculine has to get into connection with that sacred energy inside. It has to open its heart. It has to stop taking action and protecting and feel all of the feels. And that's not easy for our, our powerful divine masculine community. It is not easy for them to feel into those spaces. It is not easy for them to, to be able to visualize something and not take action on it. It is not easy for them to do. Now, I'm not saying that it was super easy for us to face all of our fears and jump into action, but it was a lot easier as a forward motion than it is to take a step and go, everything that I've ever done as a man is not working for me. I'm feeling things. I'm knowing things. My intuition is turning on. You know, I'm, I'm understanding the universe and that is asking me to slow down, not speed up. It's going against my, my initial blueprint of genetics, of species of the body that I chose. It's going against my own blueprint. My own heart is. And so as they have to take a step back and they have to be more passive, they have to feel more submissive in order to balance. Remember, you guys, mastery, true ascended masters are the extremists who met themselves in the middle. They have gone all the way into the dark, all the way into light, and they have met in the middle with perfect wisdom and understanding of both. The divine masculine must go into the divine feminine and feel and become the essence of that, that kind of nurturing space to really facilitate a true healing process with themselves. Now, if you look at your life right now, you'll notice that you've probably manifested some sort of storyline, some sort of script that you're acting out in physical reality that is helping you facilitate this idea, okay? Whether you're a divine masculine or divine feminine, you're finding that you're here to help facilitate the either or effect. For me, after three daughters, I finally have my son. And I have my son at the perfect time when I decide to wake up and remember who I am. And I've been able to watch his seven year cycle unfold as this divine masculine and scorpion energy, this very passionate, very masculine boy, and be able to nurture and love him without resentment, without all of this, this pain that we've carried in our bodies for thousands of years, women, and be able to heal. So that's my personal story. So what's your personal story? What's the story that's softening your edges for you? What's the story that you have chosen to walk through your life to allow you to be that safe space for the divine masculine rising? Or have you manifested that divine masculine aspect of yourself and manifested a safe divine feminine space for you to rise? So you'll notice that if you can hear my voice and you're still paying attention after all these minutes and you haven't turned me off, that you have this story. And so I wanted to kind of just read some of the, the, the more defined masculine and feminine aspects. So that if you're like, wait, what's divine masculine? And what's divine feminine? I'm gonna go ahead and show you that your different counterpoints and how when they blend, you become zero point energy and you become creator again and your manifestations speed up, your freedom returns, your knowing returns, your intuition and action phase, which means it's not intuition with fear. It's intuition with knowledge and action. 
It is the perfection of who we are as this unity principle of creation. So the feminine is all about the heart. It is all about feelings. It's about being passive, which means we bite our tongues when you guys say stupid stuff. You know, when you're like, I'm the best lover in the world, we're like, mm-hmm, right? Girls, you know what I'm talking about. Stillness and resting. We're receptive. We receive, okay? Imagination. We live there. Creativity. Formlessness, which means we can stay in this space of non-physical energy. Intuition and the unknown. We thrive there. Innocence. In no sense. Nonsense, okay? Inner child. Inner child speaking here. Living for joy, okay? Vision, being valid in life, beauty, soft edges, internal, attraction, collective, flexible, malleable energy, flow, process, okay? That is what the, the absolute description of a divine feminine energy is within you, whether you're man or woman. We have it within us. Now, the masculine energy is a little different. You'll notice that it's all based in form. It is mind. See how feminine was heart. The action is the side of the masculine is the mind, which means that a lot of the time we're dealing with my, men or that divine masculine energy that's all right here. Their, all their energy is right here, okay? Or right here, but that's another story. Thinking, active, being in the world, directive, defensive, reason, logic, linear thinking, must make sense, must make sense, orientating, okay? What you think you need, which means you're constantly gonna be in a state of thinking how, when, why, where. Living to survive, reality, get into reality, must achieve to be valid, hardworking, external, assertive, individual, rigid, go focused and outcome focused. Okay, just wanted to share that that was the best description that I could find to give you kind of an understanding of what I'm talking about here when I'm describing basically duality in its natural perspective. You are both feminine and masculine. You have two sides of your brain, left hemisphere, right hemisphere. One is masculine, one is feminine, one is artistic, one is logic. You are facing the same stories that you're seeing outside in the collective within you. And our job right now, whether you are the divine masculine rising, or you are the divine feminine that has risen into her, her state of empowerment and knowing thyself again. Our job is to hold space for our divine masculine and take a step out of our own egos and don't go into a state of resentment when we start to begin to see them becoming vulnerable. Because remember you guys, vulnerability and strength is what our whole unity process is about creating. It isn't just about being strength, strong. It is not about just being wise. It is not just about being vulnerable. It is not about being a victim or a perpetrator. It is about being both vulnerable and strong with the sense of ourselves. So women, our job is to hold space and work on the shadow aspects of ourselves that get triggered when we see the divine masculine fall. When we see them fall, because remember you guys, they have to fall in order to rise. They have to fall in order to rise because that is their evolution process. And their fall could be rock bottom, losing everything, becoming a single father, you know, getting some sort of disease, you know, not being able to work anymore. Whatever their identification of the divine masculine self that projects their identity to themselves usually will be stripped away when it's their time to wake up. And our job is to not go into resentment and judge and ridicule this process. Because this is something, just being completely honest, that I just worked through myself the last six months. Seeing the divine masculine appear weak was a major trigger for me. And the reason why was because I had to be strong so long as a single mom. I had to be mom, I had to be dad, I had to be the breadwinner, I had to be the intuitive, I had to be the life coach. You know, I had to be everything in my household and when I would see a collective vibration or a manifestation of divine masculine being weak, which I attracted a lot of, by the way, hmm, around me, it was a major trigger for me because it 
it felt like weakness. And when I really stepped back and processed my own shadow around my own weakness within myself, I realized that in order for our divine masculine to rise, they have to find that vulnerable space within themselves and heal from the ground up, just like we did. Just like we did, you guys. And when we found each other, we realized how powerful we were in a collective. Well, the divine masculine has to find himself first, his divine feminine, reconnect through children play and the arts and music and sound and all of the silly things in life and move into that vibration of alignment with the divine feminine and then move into the relationships of other divine masculine balanced energy and then within a very short time we will meet in the middle and we will begin to build this new world together we will build it from a space of vulnerability and strength together so whatever you're noticing about yourself whatever you're noticing about your partner or your children or your collective take a look at where you're being triggered by this feminine feminine or masculine energy and work within your own shadow aspects of your own out of alignment energy and then it is then that you will have a true grace for this divine masculine rising and it is in that space that we allow if you guys understand the term holding space what that means is that I am not here to judge you I am NOT here to fix you I am NOT here to help you I am here to be here I am here to hold this space I am here to see you as your authentic self I am here to inspire you I am here to walk as an example for you but I am NOT here to judge you or fix you therefore what I've noticed a lot, especially in the spiritual community, is the divine feminine rises, becomes completely disgusted by the divine masculine, runs away from the relationship only to bring that karmic energy into her divine union with girls and women and children. And so now we're having to come full circle. So just like the men or the divine masculine had to find their vulnerability in watching us rise, now we have to find our vulnerability in watching them fall. And we have to be here and really hold space for them. And that is why my SOS or my call to action for this second Sunday is that if you are that divine masculine and you have a story about what this process has been like for you, I advise you to get on some sort of platform or blog or find a community, build a community and start to assist other divine masculine in this rising platform because there's so many goddess groups there's so many women's retreats all over the planet and up until this point unless it's football beer sports or some sort of you know male old collective gaming system there is no men there's no male groups other than our military guys you know they cluster together and they do stuff where is our divine masculine rising groups? This is a call to action. I know in my community, the men that I'm working with, and sadly to say in my collective quantum community that I have, which is over 10,000, I have only 10% of my divine masculine in my group that is beginning to rise. So I have call to action for them to start their groups, to start their training, to start their coaching, and coach from the perspective of what it is actually like to have to fall in order to rise. This is the message that really needs to be talked about right now because you guys may resonate with me, but that's because I have this divine masculine aspect about myself. I'm not going to, you know, cry and I'm not going to be passive and submissive. I'm here every week in your face telling you the truth of what I know to be the truth. So therefore, you're used to that energy, but what are, is our divine masculine representation? So it's a call to action. And I will tell you that especially in my community, in our community, in the Quantum Revolution community, in the Jessica Alstrom community, you have our full support. We are here to watch you rise. We are here to assist you to rise. And we are here to hold space Why you do so. So this is my message for October, the spooky month where anything is possible, where the shadows mixes with the light, and the veil is very, very, very thin, you guys, which means this is an opportunity. This month is an opportunity for new beginnings, new ideas, new awareness, new ways to look at each other, 
new ways to formulate concepts, new ways to put yourself out there, new ways to let yourself pull down deep inside of yourself. So thank you guys so much for letting me share this message with you for October 2019, and I will see you all next month.